All right, so now we're back here with a sample piece of writing. Uh, this is an essay, uh, a talk that I gave at um, a conference a couple of years ago, and um, and it's it's in the same, it's in a similar kind of drafty state um, that you know I would expect your essays to be in uh, to some degree now. Um, I haven't come back to this. I haven't refined it. I haven't submitted it for publication. I haven't finished preparing it to be submitted for publication. One of the things I would need to do is really go back and thoroughly revise this to make sure that I am saying exactly what I mean to say. Um, and I'm going to use the paramedic method in order to revise some of this, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to highlight all of the prepositions in yellow and all the verbs to be in red. And I'm just gonna do, um, I'm just gonna do a few pages. Um, let's see, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I haven't reread this in a while, so so I'm not exactly sure <laughs> um, which parts need, m need more work. Um, but I'm gonna start by um, highlighting all of the prepositions in yellow and the verbs to be in red. Okay, so first of all, uh, here is a verb to be. Okay. Uh, here's a verb to be. Here's a preposition. Here's a preposition. Here is a preposition. Oops, sorry. Preposition. Preposition, preposition, preposition. I recognize that my own writing, in my own writing, I tend to use a lot of prepositions. And this is something that my teacher has commented on with me as well. So um, uh, in general, a good rule of thumb is, you know, if you have more than two prepositions in a sentence, you want to really look at that sentence, okay, to think about whether you need all of those prepositions. Okay, after is a preposition of, here is a uh, use of the verb to be, into, preposition, preposition. Um, now the more complex your sentences are, the more prepositions you will likely have. That is obvious and, um, and true, but, uh, but you do still want to take a look at them. And you may not want to change all of the prepositions, get rid of all of them. They might be important for you, okay? Uh, important for the sense of your sentence. But but you do want to know that you're doing it deliberately. Okay, two. And, okay, so you get you get a picture, right, of what is happening here. Um, variety of predatory people. Uh, she seeks to. This is part of the verb. Um, here is a verb to be. Preposition. Preposition. And, and, 
Okay. Um, so I've only done the first, um, most of the first two paragraphs, okay? You can tell just from looking at this that, uh, that I have many, many, many more prepositions than I do verbs to be. Um, so that, that's a good position for me to be in. It may make this a little bit challenging for me to revise, but let's go through and take a look, okay? First, we're going to look at, the, at this beginning uh, use of the verb to be. So this isn't a helping verb, um, but where is the, act the action of this, of this sentence? Well, it could be this word demands, okay? Um, so that, that might be the subject of this sentence, uh, or sorry, the, um, the action of this sentence. Um, I could simply state, and now I'm going to turn my suggesting on, okay? Um, I could take this curious transitional mid-century novel Henrietta, um, I could simply state it demands more study than it has received, okay, by getting rid of this is a curious work that, okay, that would be a very simple way for me to revise this sentence, okay. I might want this word curious in there, but I've already said transitional and mid-century, so, you know, I could, the word transitional might, um, might already be doing double duty there, okay. If I wanted to keep this idea of strain, strangeness of, of her work, I could add another word here. Strange transitional mid-century novel, okay? Um, demands more study than it has received, okay? Um, oh, this is a preposition. Um, okay, so in some respects it is organized. Okay, so where's the action of this sentence? Well, it would be organized. Right? So I'm going to turn organized into the main verb of this sentence. Okay. Um, let's see, how can I do that? Uh, okay, the sexual contract central to domestic fiction. What Nancy Armstrong? This one I might, I might need to keep this passive construction. Um, I could say Lennox's Henrietta is organized around. I could say Nancy Armstrong's um, concept of the sexual contract organizes, right, uh, Henrietta's plot. Okay, so I, that's probably how I would do it um, if I wanted to remove this. Uh, but I would probably keep it like this, even though I don't know that that's really the best, <laughs> um, the best response. But uh, so I'm resisting. I'm 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 going to try not to to be myself here. I'm going to go with what my professor said and revise this for simplicity. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this organized and turn this into the action of the of this sentence. Okay, so what is actually organizing? Well, it's this sexual contract idea. Okay, this is a little bit complicated, but what I'm essentially saying is. The sexual contract central to domestic fiction um, organizes the plot of here's where I could I could put strange if I wanted to, right? Period. Okay. I don't need this in some respects. That's a wind up. Get rid of that, right? Um, I'm missing still this reference to Nancy Armstrong. Okay, so I could start here. Um, okay, um, what Nancy Armstrong terms the sexual contract central to domestic fiction organizes the plot of Lennox's novel. Okay, there we go. Um, but then what I've done is I've missed all the rest of this. Okay, this is what is this doing? Well, this is a definition of that sexual contract. Okay. Um, so what I could do sexual contract is a general term. Okay, so I could get rid of the quotes here because it's not specific really to her. The idea is her hers, but I'm going to go on to explain that here, okay? Um, okay, so now I'm going to explain Armstrong's idea. The 
rewards female submission with economic security and happiness in the domestic fear sphere. Okay, so now there are two there are two sentences here instead of one. That's a really great technique. Okay, if you uh, find that you have a lot of prepositions in one sentence, see if you can turn that sentence into two sentences. Okay, break it down into two sentences, as I've done here. Okay. Um, this is a little bit cumbersome. Okay, describe the sexual contract as one that rewards female submission with economic security and happiness in the domestic fear sphere. Um, um, I might come back to that. Let's move on. I've now gotten rid of, of that, of two verbs to be, okay? Um, okay, so one's deeply reverse and perversely of a piece with a social structure to which Henrietta belongs. Okay, I have a lot of prepositions here. I'm going to just try to get rid of at least one or two, okay? Complicates this rubric um, through narration that renders the novel's incest trick both deeply perverse, deeply perverse, and perversely of a piece with, we can say, like the social structure to which Henrietta belongs, okay? Um, so now I've gotten rid of a lot of uh, prepositions. So let's see what this looks like. Um, okay. Charlotte Lennox's transitional, uh, what, this is not it, sorry about this. Um, let me go and see, will it show me the, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to select everything, but what it reads now is Charlotte Lennox's strange transitional mid-century novel, Henrietta, demands more study than it has received. Um, the sexual contract, central to domestic fiction, organizes the plot of Lennox's novel. Nancy Armstrong famously described the sexual contract as one that rewards female submission with economic security and happiness in the domestic sphere. And yet, Lennox complicates this rubric through narration that renders the novel's incest trick, incest trick both deeply perverse and perversely like the social structure to which Henrietta belongs. So I'm saying the same thing, but I've gotten rid of almost half the number of words here, okay? Maybe not half, but uh, at least a quarter, okay? Let's take a look a little bit later. I'm um, getting into my plot summary. After the death of her parents, the eponymous protagonist is thrust alone and friendless into a hostile world filled with people who seek to appropriate her body, her gentility, and her family name for their own purposes. Okay, here's the verb to be. Uh, what is the action of this sentence? Is this thrusting? Okay. Um, so the question is who's doing, what is doing the action of this? Um, and it's unclear, but it may be the death of her parents. Okay. Is what thrusts her into. Okay. So we could say, um, the death of her parents thrusts the eponymous protagonist, alone and friendless, into a hostile world filled with people who seek to appropriate her body, her gentility, and her family name for their own purposes, okay? Um, I've gotten rid of that verb to be, and I've gotten rid of a few, uh, at least one of these uh, prepositions, okay? She flees the protection of Lady Manning. She flees Lady... Manning's protection, okay, and ah, I see why I said that, right? She flees Lady Manning's and her Aunt Meadows' protection ending up in London at the mercy of, of many predatory people, okay? There she seeks to, to, right, to maintain, that's a part of the verb, her own moral agency, which is routinely misrecognized. Okay, is routinely misrecognized. So where's the action of this sentence? Let's see. 
Um, there, she seeks to maintain her own moral agency, which is routinely misrecognized in part by going into service. Okay, so who, the verb, the action of the sentence is, mm, it's twofold, okay? There are two things happening. One is that she tries to maintain her old, own moral agency by going into service, okay? Uh, taking a job, getting a job uh, to support herself. And also the fact that her agency is routinely, her moral agency is routinely misrecognized. So there, there, are two, there are two sort of sentences here, right? There are two ideas here. Um, the first one is this idea. If we cut this, okay? Okay, not in part, but by, okay? She seeks to maintain her own moral agency by going into service, okay? So instead of being dependent on others, she's, she's gonna help herself. Um, but I've left out this whole this whole idea about her agency, her morality, her moral certainty, right, being routinely misrecognized. So I need to add another sentence here, okay, in order to get that point across. Um, the people around her routinely, her, her moral center. Okay, recognize the moral center of, I don't know, let's see, um, moral People around her routinely misrecognize the morality that drives her actions. Okay, so I had to add a second sentence here because this sentence really has two things happening in it. Okay, um, I could I could keep them connected there and keep this passive voice. Um, I could do that if I wanted to, um, but I wanted to show you how this would work. Okay. Here's another one. At the end of the novel, Henrietta, who has been traveling under the assumed name of Miss Benson, is reunited with her brother Charles. Okay. Uh, is reunited. So reunited by whom? Who's doing the reuniting? Well, this is this is a little bit more complicated, right? Because Henrietta isn't reuniting. Um, it's more abstract than that, right? Um, it's more like circumstances reunite her right, with her brother. Uh, let's see. We could say, um, we could say reconnects here, right? Uh, and if we said reconnects, then we would be getting rid of that verb to be. And also, incidentally, exchanging one word for two, right? Um, here's another way to get rid of wordiness, right? We can, we can simply say traveling under the assumed name of Miss Benson. Um, or traveling as Miss Benson, traveling anonymously, who has been traveling as Miss Benson, right? Or incognito, right? Reconnects with her brother Charles. Um, separated for years, both using assumed names, um, they do not know that they are blood. Okay. Both using assumed names. Okay, so this just has a lot of prep, a couple, two prepositions in it. I think that's fine. Charles, now called Freeman, seeks to procure his sister as a mistress for Melville, his noble charge to whom he is tutor. Okay, so this is a kind of complicated sentence. And um, is tutor so tutoring? Okay, so that's the that's the action of this sentence. Um, Charles tutors Melville, his noble charge. Charles, now called uh, Freeman. Charles, what has he been doing, right? Well, he has been um, Charles, now called Freeman. Uh, da, da, da. Charles, tutor to his tutor to Charles. Now, let's see, what would I do here? To whom he is tutor? Um, uh, 
Let's see. I'm not sure what I would do here. I think this is a, this is a challenging one um, because it's about his identity here. Uh, seeks to procure his sister as a mistress for Melville. Uh, his noble charge. The the young nobleman he has been tutoring. Okay. Now this doesn't get rid of the verb to be. Okay. Uh, but it does get rid of this uh, awkward construction at the end. Um, we could say he has been traveling with as right tutor. So we could say that as well. Um, even though as is still a problem. Okay. Um, so I don't know, I probably wouldn't really do too much to change that. But so the point that I'm trying to make is that when you're trying to revise your sentences, okay, um, you want to zero in on the verbs to be and the prepositions and then work from there. Okay. Uh, is virtually disappeared. Here's a great example. The word is okay is the um, is in this sentence okay so let's uh, let's see what we can do with this I want to bold this so as you can see it okay um, let's make it red okay um, and the action of this sentence is actually disappear right so you know the act of of silencing someone or disappearing someone or you know making them invisible okay uh, it's an awkward construction right is disappeared what does that even mean okay um, so I need to be clear about this when Henrietta and her brother realize their kinship the novel's focus abruptly shifts and Henrietta as an autonomous woman and moral agent is virtually disappeared so who's doing the action who's disappearing her well the sentence doesn't tell us, does it? Um, who's doing the action of, her, of this disappearing? It's kind of like the, the novel itself, okay? The novel makes her agency disappear, okay? Um, so I would probably want to just say that, okay? Um, once the siblings Um, Henrietta from the narrative. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's one way that I would do this. Okay, um, what's missing is this idea of abrupt shift in the novel's focus. Okay, so I've got narrative here, disappears from the narrative. Um, so what I would probably do is um, try to take that I central idea about abrupt shift, okay, and incorporate it here. Once the siblings realize their relationship, Henrietta virtually, dis vir ab abruptly, I could say abruptly, disappears from the narrative, okay? Um, she kind of becomes invisible and the whole story becomes about him okay Henrietta agrees to hide herself away in a convent for the time being and the narrative itself focuses on her brother Charles's efforts to secure her fortune um, so she can marry Melville instead of becoming his mistress okay is rebooted um, okay so I'm gonna keep this because I like it but uh, but I hope you get the point that I'm that I'm trying to make here uh, you can you can always get rid of verbs to be okay always um, try your best okay to eliminate redundancy and repetition and unnecessary windups by zeroing in on excessive preposition use and verbs to be okay those are kind of the key linchpins in your prose style so uh, why don't you give that a try uh, and I will look forward to seeing your results